Well, if you've been there, you know how I feel. My door locks aren't working. They just stop. Nothing. I'm turning the key and the locks are not going up or going down. So what do I do? I receive emails like this on a regular basis. How can I fix my door locks? You're looking at a 1986 300 SDL 126 chassis and the 126 chassis introduced in 1981 was the first Mercedes where they used an remote vacuum pump to control the door locks. So if you're having problems, you have to start a systematic troubleshooting sequence to find the problem. If your door locks are not working at all, I recommend you begin your troubleshooting sequence at the fuse box. Remove the lid, read down through the different fuses and locate the one that controls the central locking system. In this case, it's fuse number 15, so I'm going to reach in here and inspect it, and it looks okay. Once you've determined the fuse is okay, then we need to move on to this auxiliary pump that I talked about earlier. The 126 vacuum door lock pump is located in the trunk, right next to the spare tire. If you lift the cover, you'll see this black rubber housing off to the right side, and you probably wouldn't even know there's anything in there you will see a number of uh, electrical and possible vacuum lines coming out of this housing. But that's where the pump resides. And I tell you, it's probably not the best place to put these pumps. As these old 126 leak moisture into the trunk, the pump develops corrosion and fails. That's probably the primary reason why I find more problems with these pumps on the 126 chassis than any other models. To gain access to the pump, you'll have to remove the spare tire and then the bracket which holds this rubber housing up tight against the spare tire well. Then you can take it and roll it over upside down and open it up and this will expose the pump. Look at that. You can see it has both electrical connections and one vacuum connection. You may think why only one because I know that most of those older models like the 123 chassis had two vacuum lines in most of the systems. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and unplug it and remove it from the trunk for bench testing. You know this rubber housing is okay, particularly to protect the pump from any type of object damage or vibration. But when you're talking about moisture, this is probably a detriment because it can trap moisture inside, which leads to corrosion on the contacts and even internally in the motor. The reason I'm going to remove this pump and bench test it is because I want to make sure that there is no problem with the wiring or the wiring contacts. So the next step in my troubleshooting procedure will be to take this into the bench and test it directly with a battery or a booster. I'm ready to show you how to bench test the vacuum door lock pump. Before I begin, I need to explain there's a difference between the early and the late pumps from 1981 to 1985. These pumps have a single electrical connector with three prongs. From 86 on, the pumps had two electrical connectors and they're a little bit more difficult to test. In this section of the video, I'm going to show you how the early pump is tested. To do this, you will need a 12 volt power source. Here I have a 12 volt booster connected with some wires that will allow me to power up the pump. If you don't have a booster, a 12 volt battery with some wires will do just fine. Here's a close up of the contact points in the early pump. Note there are three pins in a triangular arrangement. To test these, I'm going to use an old plug that I've removed from a parts car. If you don't have one of these plugs, you can take the alligator clips and go in and make contact with these pins, but you're going to have to be very careful not to contact the two alligator clips together. You're going to get some sparking going on. One of the pins is ground. The other two pins are for 12 volt in. Power to one pin with this one grounded will make the pump run one direction or blow air and connected at the other pin, the pump will reverse and suck air. This is really important to remember as you're testing this system. I've connected the ground wire from my booster to the brown wire of this wiring harness. And once again in Mercedes, ground wires are generally black or brown. Now I've taken the positive lead and I'm going to 
connect it to one of these two remaining wire ends. I don't know which one is which at this point, but let's touch this one. Nothing is happening. Look at that. Oh, is the pump bad? I don't know yet. See, nothing's happening. Now, if I touch the green wire, listen to the pump run. So if you didn't understand how this pump reverses direction, you may assume that, wow, the pump's bad. I'm going to go ahead and buy a pump because it's only running once one direction. Once again, it's not running in this direction, but it's running in this direction. But watch this. If I connect this and let the pump run, I take my finger and go over to the vacuum plug here and close it off. Notice the pump ran and then stopped. Now that flips a switch inside this pump, which will allow it to run the other direction. Watch that. But if I go back to the green wire, it's not running. So when testing the pump, you have to go one direction and you can feel it's blowing air right now. Hold the finger, shuts off. Go back to the other wire, run the pump. Now I can feel it sucking air. Hold my finger on the end and it shuts it off. You can also test this pump with a vacuum door lock actuator connected to it as you see here. Remember that in 1981 Mercedes changed the design of these actuators. 123 and older models had two connector points. One was pulling vacuum one way and the other was pulling vacuum the other way and that's what made the actuator move up and down. But with the introduction of the 126 only one connector point is used as you can see right here. The pump sucks one direction and pulls the rod down and then pressurizes or blows the other direction to push the rod up. So you can actually use the pump to test these actuators as well. Let me show you how the pump works with it connected to a vacuum door lock actuator. In this scene, I'm going to show you how to do this just using the alligator clips because I know a lot of you are not going to have a spare plug laying around that you can test the pump with you may have a little difficulty in determining which one of these pins is the ground, but go ahead and connect one and try it. If that doesn't work, then move it to the next pin. It's going to be one of the three pins that's grounding the unit, and it may take some experimentation on your part. Once you've determined the ground, then you can use the positive lead to alternate between the two remaining contacts to run that actuator up and down. Watch here as I make contact. It pulled the actuator down and shut the motor off. Then I'll touch the other contact point. It runs the actuator up and shuts the pump down. So this has shown me that this pump is in good operating condition and the actuator is also good. If this actuator has a leak in it, it may move. It may actually go all the way up, but the pump may not shut off. That's a good indication you're going to have to replace this unit right here. That concludes the segment on early pump testing. In the next segment of this video, I'm going to go over testing the later model pumps.